Now Indigo Ellis is with us, a research analyst at the risk consultancy group Verisk Maplecroft. Indigo, nice to have you with us. How do you see things playing out here? I mean, Catherine was alluding to things like sort of a, a potential ob obstructionism and people complaining of intimidation and the like. How do you see all this sort of playing out in the next few days up to the vote? I think what we're seeing here is a very clear indication of Kabila's intentions. He intends to be able to influence the results of these elections on Sunday through from behind the scenes. So he has stepped back and he's appointed this successor, Shadari, who is meant to take the reins from him at least until 2023. I think what he's trying to do by, for example, the governor of Kinshasa withdrawing the ability for, for Yulu to hold this, um, this demonstration today, is, is he's, he's really trying to target Fayulu's campaign because he sees Fayulu as the main contender, the main contender to actually legitimately win the vote share that Shadri is intended to, to take from them. It all seems, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Indigo, it seems also transparent, at least for us looking from the out in, that all of this is happening, that Kabila is pulling the strings, that he's still trying to event, uh, influence things. Do you think that's the way people understand it and read it as well, actually, in Kinshasa? I think there's a lot of understanding about the way that um, Kabila is trying to manipulate this vote on Sunday. I think there is, there is still an element of hope. There is still an element that Fayulu or Tisha Sekedi under the Cap Pour le Changement will be able to, to succeed and to win. But ultimately, these two main scenarios that we at Varys Maplecroft see are firstly, Shadri winning an unfair vote outright. And secondly, a scenario where Shadri, um, it, well, is meant to win this vote, but he actually is, has to co-opt opposition members into a coalition government. Both scenarios will involve great unrest and, without doubt, a contested result. If we widen things out a little bit, the DRC borders, I think, at least seven more countries. Is there a risk of spillover here? Do you think those neighbouring countries will be concerned about what could happen? I think... Um, and definitely with, with anything that's going on in DRC, there is a regional element. I think in particular, we're looking to the east, we're looking to Rwanda, we're looking to Burundi for their reactions to what's going on. Already, we've seen a step up of troop action on the border with Burundi and the border with South Kivu. And as well, we see, we see in Rwanda, there have been, just yesterday, there was an attack on rebel militias coming over from DRC into Rwanda. And they, in the process of doing that, killed two Congolese army members. I think this is the main issue that we have to see, that anything that goes on that affects the instability in the East is going to spill over onto the, into the regional neighbours. I think at the moment, Rwanda, Burundi will be watching what's going on in Kinshasa very carefully today. Indigo Ellis joining us from London talking DRC. Thank you for that.